watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law, voted best of Las Vegas. Give them a call, 702-727-9900. Thank you for joining us here on News 25 and Ace Country Radio and streaming at kpvm.tv and now on Roku on this Monday, April 8th, Total Eclipse Day. Good evening, I'm Chris Palermo. Here's what's happening. Earlier today, a shooting occurred in Las Vegas, leaving three dead. Rory Rossell has the details. Three people are now dead, including the suspected shooter, following a shooting that broke out inside of an office building in Summerlin, Las Vegas, according to the Clark County Sheriff. Today, April 8th, an active shooter situation was reported around 10 a.m. in the fifth floor of Prince Law Office inside of the City National Building off of Charleston Boulevard and Pavilion Center Drive. In a briefing, Sheriff Kevin McMahill said that there are two victims, one male and one female, found dead at the scene. Investigators believe the shooter took his own life, according to Mick Mahill, and there is no active threat to the community. The relationship between the shooter and the victims has not been confirmed as of yet, and officers were allegedly searching the gunman's car inside, adjacent from the parking lot garage, to determine if there was anything suspicious left behind. Dozens of people were escorted away from the building. Red Rock Casino was serving as a refuge area for all of the people who were escorted and evacuated at that time. Anyone who is looking to connect with somebody who was evacuated are asked to call 702-455-AID. News 25 will keep you informed on any updates to this developing story. And the Nye County Sheriff's Office is still searching for a man who they say is connected to a violent crime against an elderly person, R.J. Camacho reports. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is seeking assistance from the public in order to locate a violent suspect. The suspect is identified as Josh Simmons, who was wanted in connection to a violent crime against an elderly person, which occurred on March 30th in Pahrump. Josh Simmons is described as 45 years old, 5 foot 9 inches, 280 pounds with brown hair and eyes. Simmons is known to drive a white International Pro Star Plus semi truck and a gray Dodge 3500 pickup truck, possibly with Utah license plates. Anyone with knowledge of his whereabouts is urged to notify the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 775-751-7000 and choose option 5. You can additionally call Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555 in order to remain anonymous. More news now. On Friday, the group No Label held a digital briefing announcing they will not be having a third candidate on the 2024 general election ballot. Samantha Roberts has more in the story. Though initially qualifying to be on Nevada's 2024 general election ballot, the national group No Labels won't be including a third-party candidate in the state. During a virtual briefing on Friday, No Labels National Convention Chair Mike Rawlings said that Americans are hungrier than ever for an alternative, but the group wasn't able to find a candidate we felt had a viable path to the White House. While this is disappointing, we don't believe it is the end of our journey, he said. The announcement comes as Robert F. Kennedy Jr., an independent presidential bid, has hit a snag being included on Nevada's ballot. His campaign announced in March it had collected the needed signatures to be included on the ballot in Nevada, but Nevada law requires independent presidential candidates to include a vice presidential candidate in order to qualify for the ballot, which Kennedy lacked when he submitted the requisite signatures for his petition. He had announced his vice presidential candidate, California ultra-wealthy attorney Nicole Shanahan, last month. The campaign currently has an until July 5th to collect signatures. The Nevada Office for the Secretary of State said it made an error in providing Kennedy with incorrect information on how to qualify, which included having a vice presidential candidate. The office maintains state law applies to Kennedy's bid regardless, though the campaign has threatened to sue for access to the ballot. No labels didn't directly mention any of the presidential candidates by name, including the people interviewed for a potential third-party run during its virtual briefing on Friday, April 5th. Former Missouri 
Missouri Democratic Governor Jay Nixon, now working with No Labels, said that the two major candidates are both running divisive campaigns, referring to President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. Neither is presenting to us, to America, a vision of unity. None of the speakers on Friday offered details on what they believed constituted being divisive or mentioned Trump's efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election through the January 6th insurrection. Kennedy's independent presidential bid wasn't referenced at all. Well, today's top story is definitely the solar system's eclipse. Our Las Vegas correspondent Maria Centers now joins us from the city with the top viewing tips from NASA's leading astronauts. Today, April 8th, 2024, from 10, 12 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., here in Las Vegas, we could see a partial eclipse. We had a peak viewing time at 11.20 a.m. The last time a solar eclipse hit North America was back in 2017, and another viewable one here isn't scheduled for another at least 20 years. A total eclipse happens when the moon travels between the sun and the earth and completely blocks the light from the sun. If you are in the path of totality, everything will get dark and you'll be in for the show of a lifetime. Expect a lot of excitement. While Southern Nevada wasn't in the path of totality for the solar eclipse, we were lucky enough to view a partial eclipse as it traveled across North America, first arriving over Mexico before shooting up from Texas to Maine and departing over Eastern Canada. The only time you can look at the total eclipse without eye protection is during a brief period of totality when the moon completely covers the sun. Viewing any part of the sun without protection, even for a short amount of time, can cause serious eye damage. One way to safely view the sun is with eclipse glasses. Solar eclipse glasses are thousands of times darker than traditional sunglasses. Make sure they're ISO certified by looking for a label like this one. If they appear to be scratched or damaged, don't use them. If you don't have eclipse glasses, you can use an indirect viewing method like a pinhole projector. Basically, use any holy object and cast a shadow on a nearby surface. The globe's next solar eclipse that can be viewed here in the United States won't hit until August 23rd, 2044. If you're feeling crafty, you can even make a pinhole viewer using a cardboard box. If you want to use a telescope, binoculars, or camera to view the sun, you must place a safe solar filter on those two, except during totality. Reporting right here from Las Vegas, I'm Maria Centers with Southern Nevada News Network. And additional information about today's eclipse can be found online at science.nasa.gov. More coming up, you're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Sky watchers of Southern Nevada and North America enjoy a rare sighting of the solar eclipse. Mikey Ruhan has the details. Stargazers and sky watchers of Pahrump and Southern Nevada were treated to a partial solar eclipse. People had the chance to observe a rare astronomical event as the moon moved between the Earth and the Sun. The partial eclipse began at about 10-12 a.m. this morning, and the maximum amount of the Sun's disk was covered at 11-20 a.m. According to NASA, mid-eclipse was equal to a little over 50% magnitude. The Las Vegas sphere even got in on the action. It took just one hour and 40 minutes for the moon's shadow to race more than 4,000 miles across the continent. The partial shadow crossed into the U.S. in Texas just after noon local time, and a bit more than an hour later, the minutes of totality began. The total eclipse of the sun traced a path from southern Texas to northern Maine. The next total solar eclipse over the contiguous United States won't come again until August 2044. More news now, housing, housing prices have been exploding lately and with a shortfall of housing too, certainly not helping. News 25 reporter David Preston has more on this story. Nevadans now need to make at least $111,557 to afford a monthly mortgage payment According to a new study from Bankrate, this is a 56% income increase from four years ago, as related to what it takes to afford a medium-priced single-family home in this state, which is now $434,400. This puts the average monthly mortgage payment at $2,603 per month, 
for a household with two incomes. Bankrate estimated that in 2020, the average Nevada household only had to make $71,221 to spend less than 30% of its monthly income on housing, which analysis mark as the benchmark for affordability. Charles Daughtery, a senior economist at Wells Fargo, says that skyrocketing housing costs could become a big ticket item this fall for the 2024 presidential election, given the growing unaffordability of real estate across the country. I think it's already an issue, says Daltery. If you look at some of the proposals that this administration has put forth in regard to housing affordability and potential solutions, or at least to relieve some of the affordability strains that have cropped up over the past few years, I think that this shows this is top of mind for politicians and the population in general, says Daltrey. In March, Governor Joe Lombardo sent President Joe Biden a letter urging him to release more of Nevada's federally owned land to make way for more housing developments. Biden, in turn, keyed in on affordable housing when he last spoke in Las Vegas, highlighting his administration's plan to invest nearly $260 billion into this issue. Redfin estimates the medium down payment for a U.S. home buyer now sits at $55,640 as of the end of February, a 24.1% increase from a year earlier, which was $44,850. That's the biggest annual percentage increase since April 2nd of 2022. The medium home price in Pahrump was $355,766 in March of 2024, down 5.1% from last year, but still not affordable for those making the medium income here of just less than $30,000 annually. Daltrey said housing supply on the residential side, which has been hampered by high interest rates, has become a point of contention as the real estate market has dried up and new construction has not returned to pre-pandemic levels. How do you expand the housing supply to help relieve some of the pressure off home prices and bolster or improve affordability for residents? It certainly hit a boiling point because you have seen really rapid home price appreciation and it's risen faster than income growth. And the Nevada Department of Corrections is asking Envy Energy to keep the lights on in the state's prisons while it comes up with the funds. Samantha Roberts has more on this story. The Nevada Department of Corrections is asking Envy Energy to keep the lights on in the state's prisons while it comes up with the money to pay the bills. We've been seeing significant increases as most consumers have for their utility costs, said NDOC's Assistant Director Christina Shea. I think we're at about 20 to 25 percent increases across the board from when we built the budgets two years ago. So basically the budgets are short for the utilities. It's a budgetary process that we're working on with the government governor's finance office. NDOC budgeted about $11.3 million in utility costs for the 2024-2025 biennium, according to the state budget. We're working with our partners at NV Energy to make sure that no late fees are going to be assessed, that they're going to keep the power on until we figure out our shortfall situation, says Shea, who intends to seek more money from the legislature's interim finance committee in June. We're explaining the situation to the people who run NV Energy energy and they're being very accommodating to us. It's a level of service quite contradictory to what most Nevadans struggling to pay their utilities are experiencing. In response, the utilities spokeswoman Megan Delaney said in a statement, Nevada Energy is always willing to help customers who may reach out with financial hardship, regardless of the size or type of customer. We have a number of assistance and budgeting programs available to customers and we encourage our customers to reach out to NV Energy directly to learn more about their options. Governor Joe Lombardo did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Coming up, sports with Mikey, Vegas Golden Knights are on the road, and the all-important weather forecast. You're watching News 25. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. 
News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back to News 25. I'm Chris Palermo in sports. Well, Friday night's game, Vegas Golden Knights, was kind of ugly. They're in Vancouver tonight. Mikey has your complete look at sports. Time now for your News 25 look at sports and streaming at www.kpvm.tv and now on Roku. I can't see anything. Vegas Golden Knights had a rough one on Friday night in Arizona. They lost to the Coyotes 7-4. Next up for the Golden Knights, they play the Vancouver Canucks this evening in Vancouver. Las Vegas Aviators left Texas on a high note. They picked up a 10-6 victory over the Sugarland Space Cowboys. Next up for them, they play the Salt Lake Bees in Vegas tomorrow. Prem Valley Trojans Varsity Baseball are at Clark High School. Their game is in progress. And that's your look at sports on News 25. Thank you very much. Mikey looking good there with those shades. Pat Lemming from Never Forgotten Animal Society has a beautiful boxer mix named Allie, now ready to be adopted through their Foster to Adopt program. Hey everyone, welcome. This is Pat with Never Forgotten Animal Society at 3091 North David Street in the north end of Pahrump. And with me, I have the privilege of holding my little boy, Ali, A-L-I. He is a boxer mix of some kind. We don't know with what. He is going to be a rather bigger boy, but he is one of the sweetest little boys you've ever met. He's got two brothers that are exactly like him, and they are available here at Never Forgotten at 3091 North David Street. Our phone number is 775-537-8674 off of Bell Vista between Blagg and Leslie. Um, Ali is approximately 10 weeks old. He has had his shots. He has not been fixed yet because we don't fix them until they are at least 20 weeks old. Um, and so he's on a foster to adopt program, meaning you can take him home, integrate him into your house, um, and get him used to your situation and then at 20 weeks we schedule his surgery and that is when he's neutered and that's when the adoption becomes complete is the afternoon you pick him up from the vet after he's been fixed. Um, he is a very gentle, wonderful little boy. He wants to please. He wants to be with you. He loves being cuddled. He wants to be in bed. He wants to be in your lap. Um, he's just a really, really sweet little boy. Again, this is Ali, A-L-I. He is here at Never Forgotten Animal Society. We are open Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5 every day. No appointments are necessary. You're more than welcome to come in and meet him and his brothers here at Never Forgotten Animal Society. Um, so come on in. Uh, his adoption fee is $350. That includes the neuter, the microchip, all of his vaccinations, and his rabies certificate. So he's a package ready to go home. We would really appreciate you coming in and taking a look at our special boy. And thank you very much. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Looking outside, a Lerner and Rowe weather cam right outside the studios, KPVM right here. We're very lucky to walk outside on a break and see that beautiful blue sky. It was windy, and there is a warm-up heading our way. Complete weather in a bit. Good evening, Nevada. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Good evening, Nevada. I'm Roy Rosell here from the Channel 25 Weather Studios and streaming everywhere at kpvm.tv. Taking a look at Nevada right now. 
Up in northern Nevada, Fernley, Fallon, and Carson City are all at 57 degrees. Tonopah is at 52 degrees. Goldfield at 54. Beatty at 64. Amargosa at 70 degrees. Las Vegas at 65 degrees. And Death Valley is at 81 degrees. Here in the Paradise of Prump, it is currently 65 degrees. It is mostly sunny today. The high just a little while ago was 67 degrees. The wind is blowing north at 16 miles per hour, and the humidity today is 12%. The sun rose this morning at 619 a.m. and set at... 7.12 p.m. That's pretty late for the sun going right now. The humidity does raise up to 26% today and the winds blowing north northeast at 13 miles per hour. The low tonight's going to be 34 with clear skies. We're taking a look at the seven day forecast. It looks like there's going to be a lot of sun and a little bit of wind this weekend, but there's also a small chance of rain on Saturday, only at 19%. So I hope everybody enjoys the nice weather that's going to be happening this week until this weekend when the weather goes back down. But I also hope nobody looked at the sun today. Back to the desk. Thanks, Rory. I feel so left out with the solar eclipse glasses. That'll just about do it for us tonight. News 25. Have a great evening. I'm Chris Palermo.